I'm in an environment that's had exactly half a century to grow into a strange landscape of swamps, rivers and hills. I'm in search of a creature of the same age that's perfectly adapted to this type of terrain. I'm deep in the jungle in Birmingham. Birmingham? Until 1948, Rover had never dirtied its hands with utility vehicles. There was nowhere to test the latest product. So the Land Rover got its first taste of mud in the company car park. These days, the urban jungles used to show owners from all over the world how to handle the rough stuff. My guide, Chief Demonstrator Roger Crayfall. The biggest problems that most people have is that they're not used to vehicles articulating and driving over undulating ground such as this. <laughs> For most people, the first bump they ever drive over is a curbstone, and, uh, and they think that's quite alarming. It really is just like a jungle. But of course, there's one thing lets it down. You can actually see um, domestic houses just through there. What, what do the neighbours think of it? Well, I, I think the neighbours aren't aware that we're actually driving off-road here. We've planted thousands and thousands of trees and shrubs and bushes all over this off-road area um, to create an environment that's actually become um, quite a nature reserve. The, um, the, the Land Rover's had lots of competitors over the years, as you're aware of, but nobody's still building a standard version. Land Rover is still prepared to build the Defender as the icon of the brand. It may be an icon now, but the first Land Rover was thrown together in something of a panic. Post-war steel was rationed and car makers had to export or die. Rover boss Morris Wilkes reckoned a workhorse would fill the order books. On April the 30th, 1948, the Land Rover popped up at the Amsterdam Motor Show. It turned out to be just the thing that farmers, third world countries and the British Army had been looking for. All the same, the designers had no idea they'd be called back for its 50th birthday party held last month. The five section leaders had a look at the Jeep which the managing director had got up in Anglesey and he just told us that he wanted a vehicle for the farmers as a temporary stopgap till they got going on cars. So he gave us 12 months to design it and get it onto the road. So the five of us split up and we had about four people each, designers, drawing madly every day, getting bits made with this box section frame made of lots of bits of scrap steel in effect. And for a tough, easily built body shell, there was plenty of aluminium alloy left over from wartime aircraft production. In 1948, there was just one Land Rover model. It had a 1.6 petrol engine, it had a permanent four-wheel drive, and it did a top speed of 50 miles an hour. But it's, um, it's very basic inside, and of course the reason for that was that they parked all over the place with no roof on, so very straightforward, very simple. Just the three gauges, the speedometer, battery, and the uh, petrol gauge. It's never travelled very far, this number one Land Rover, because it was sold to a farmer in Warwickshire and then uh, actually bought back off him by Rover later in its life. By the 60s, Land Rover was a huge hit, and another classic was on the way. The 1970 Range Rover took everyone by surprise. With its new Rover V8 engine, it was a must for the leisured classes. The cheaper discovery came along in 1989, and only last year, the fashionable Freelander appeared. So where does this leave the old stager? It survived the worst of British Leyland and the Japanese onslaught. The name's Defender, but the shape's the same. The thing is, you don't buy a Defender for its looks, and plenty of people don't want it to change. The army like these flat wings just the way they are. You can stand on them, you can rest a mug of tea on them, and on hot desert duty, you can actually fry eggs on them. You just can't make one of these look trendy. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is how Land Rovers should look. A bit of good, honest mud never hurt anyone. It may be older than the hills, but Land Rover says the defenders safe for the future. But maybe we've already seen the shape of things to come. This is what happened when Land Rover designers were let loose for a science fiction film. One thing's for sure, people will get out of your way on the road. Oh, James. program of the series, Coupe Mania. Jeremy rounds up the suspects of a great coupe trial. Tiff Nidell tries the new supercharged Jaguar XK8. Tough job, but someone's got to do it. And I head back to Europe to give you the lowdown on how to save thousands on your next new car.